Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I like to discuss the continued inaction of Boris Johnson over the situation in Northern Ireland in the wake of Brexit's trade barriers and what options he thinks he has. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, in order to consider the various options, we need to look at the reality on the ground. First of all, the political reality. Now, the political reality is that Boris Johnson promised unfettered access between Britain and Northern Ireland at the same time as he was signing into law trade barriers between Britain and Northern Ireland that make unfettered access impossible. Well, just to be clear, this is essentially one way. Uh, the UK government have complete control over what passes from Northern Ireland to Britain. You know, if Boris Johnson doesn't care about goods being smuggled into the country, he doesn't need to implement any checks on goods coming into Britain that way. After all, it's going from one part of the UK to another. Not a problem. No one's got a problem with that, at least not right now. But the EU do care about smuggling. And if there's to be free movement across the border between Northern Ireland and Republic of Ireland, no checks, which is supposed to be an intangible border if adhering to the Good Friday Agreement, no checks, then there needs to be checks on certain things passing from Britain to Northern Ireland. And there's no gentleman's agreement about this. There's no, oh yeah, I know I said that, but it's not working out, so we're not going to do it. It's an international treaty that Boris Johnson won a general election on and personally signed up to along with his Conservative MPs. But this means that it is easier for Northern Irish businesses in many ways to trade with the Republic of Ireland for which there are no barriers in either direction than with Britain for which there are barriers in one direction. And it used to be equally easy. Now there's an imbalance. This understandably upsets unionists, of course, and as if, if this continues, supply chains will inevitably change to align more with the rest of Ireland and come to that the wider EU. Now the reverse is, I suppose, technically true for services, but that gets a lot less press. Not such a hot button issue, especially where Northern Ireland is concerned. Now Keir Starmer was asked about the situation in Northern Ireland, something his past career gives him rather more insights into than our current Prime Minister. And he said, there are concerns in Northern Ireland about Brexit. There are concerns about the promises that the Prime Minister made, which haven't been kept. And this, in a nutshell, explains the political problem for Boris Johnson. He promised mutually exclusive things, or rather he sort of did. He promised unfettered access between Britain and Northern Ireland, but tied the country to the Northern Ireland Protocol. There aren't, well, there are fairly serious consequences in failing to adhere to either promise. Right now, he's failing to adhere to either of them. And so we're getting the full consequences. We're having legal action taken against us internationally, which will inevitably mean trade sanctions at some point if this drags on, because that's what international consequences ultimately always are, um, you know, for not fully implementing the Northern Ireland Protocol that we've signed up for. But we're also facing civil unrest in Northern Ireland as a, as a result of the protocol even existing, really, even though it's not been properly implemented. Then there's the legal reality. Now, if you have two different customs areas, you need a customs board between them. Now, that's not the EU way of doing things, not EU rules. That's the World Trade Organization rules of international trade that Brexiteers were so happy about. And, and this is no longer a case of well, we either put that customs border up the Irish Sea or we put it between Northern Ireland and Republic of Ireland. Um, that was the case for several years. Now it's not. We've signed a treaty that puts it up the Irish Sea. That's where it is. That actually is where it is. And our reputation as a nation depends upon it being there. If not, we lose the trust of countries around the world, making it more difficult to do business with anyone. We also face legal action from those harmed by our oath-breaking which takes the form, as I said, of economic sanctions. And we've seen what happens to countries facing sanctions for not adhering to international norms on the news often enough. It's not pretty and it hurts the general population very badly. So what choice does Boris Johnson have? Right now, his inaction may probably be explained by the fact that he doesn't have one right now. 
He's doing what he always does, wishing the problem away without, with you know, his standard procrastination. Until the consequences become imminent, he'll do nothing. And I mean consequences that he cares about, which is not the precarious political instability in Northern Ireland, which is already bad and could get worse. Uh, a Portuguese EU official, whose name I'm not going to mangle, said that critics of the protocol have no alternatives. He said that those calling for the protocol to be scrapped have not come up with any better ideas. Now this is sort of true, uh, they haven't come up with any better ideas, but that doesn't mean to say that there isn't an alternative or a better idea. You just won't hear it from those wanting the protocol scrapped. It's all a matter of priorities really. Before we left the EU, Boris Johnson had a choice. One, he could have the customs border up the Irish Sea, harming UK businesses and enraging unionists. That's what he did. But there were other options. Two, customs border inside Ireland, between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, breaching, of course, a treaty that rather more serious politicians signed up to whilst he was practising his buffoonery on Have I Got News For You? Oh, and uh, enraging Republicans. The third option was to maintain customs arrangements which is what Theresa May was wanting to do, so that we have the unfettered access that he promised. Now that last one sounds like a bit of a no-brainer, but it was attacked by Brexiteers as having to sign up to EU rules. Except, of course, that's not the full story as we can see now. Because there are EU rules and there are EU rules. There are EU rules that cover members of their single market and there are EU rules that cover third countries. Brexit supporters thought it was a choice between following EU rules and not following EU rules. No, 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 we're following EU rules regardless. It was a choice between following EU member rules, or at least single market member rules, or third country rules. The third country rules are way worse. Of course they are. What is the point in being a member of anything if the rules are worse than not being a member? Of course the rules of membership are going to be way better. So if Boris Johnson wants to keep his promise of unfettered access, all perfectly legal with zero international repercussions, then there is one alternative to the Northern Ireland Protocol. That is, we join the EEA, the European Economic Area. Norway and Switzerland, countries that were held up as models of non-EU membership of Europe, during the 2016 uh, referendum, um, they're part of the EEA as members of EFTA. It would be better if we had an even closer relationship? Of course, membership was the best deal. But joining the EEA would solve our problems with Brexit as far as Northern Ireland is concerned. And quite frankly, businesses throughout the length and breadth of Britain would be cheering at such a concept, especially now. It's uh, it's still less good, like I said, than being EU members because we would have less power, but we'd have more power than we do now and a lot more trade and a lot fewer political problems. And here's the thing. We are going to join the EEA. It is actually the only alternative to the Northern Ireland Protocol. That is it. It's the only legal alternative. The protocol is now a dirty word. Europhiles hate it because it represents division and trade barriers. We don't want it scrapped with nothing in its place, but we do not like it. We want to be members of the EU. Brexiteers hate it because it shines a spotlight on their moronic statements over the past few years. So the protocol will end up being replaced. No one's backing it right now. No one in this country is backing it. It's not going to be removed because Johnson can't actually withstand the international or domestic political consequences of doing so. Neither will any replacement that the Conservatives can find if he faults, which he always does. Jacob Rees-Mogg's idea for a technical solution, nowhere to be seen. Insisted that it already existed, he did. Not just that it's in development, it's already around the world, is it? Where is it then, Moggy? Where is it? Oh, oh, it doesn't exist after all? All right, never mind. No, the only way out of this is joining the EEA. The only question is, do we delay and cause more political and economic damage before finally doing what we needed and obvious was to do from the start? It may well be like lockdowns. Could be like lockdowns, isn't it? Boris Johnson knows he has to put them in place. We've had three now in this country. They've all been inevitable. What he does, he puts them in place because late, because he finds it politically impossible to do what's necessary 
to avoid the need for COVID lockdown. So then we need a lockdown. We all know the coming. Every one of the three so far, it was no surprise at all to anyone paying attention. He waited until the damage was so horrendous that the political opposition to the move melted away. Maybe that's his plan now. Have the country suffer so badly that there remains little opposition to joining the EEA as the only palatable alternative? Remember, Boris Johnson isn't doing any of this because he's a committed Brexiteer. Far from it. He argued for years that we should remain in the EU. What he's doing, he did because he wanted to be Prime Minister. He has absolutely no personal opposition to us aligning more closely with Europe once again. He could easily do it. He just needs the opposition to melt away in the Conservative Party. The problem is that I suspect it will be like lockdowns and it will take some years and an awful lot of damage. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.